Today I'm going to talk you through makeup for your passport photos. Those photos are renowned for draining colour from your face, so having makeup on your skin will help you to look a lot more natural, especially when it's scaled down. UK passports are now in black and white, so having makeup on your skin will help you to look more like you, rather than a washed out, tired version of yourself. Not all of these steps are going to be necessary, but I'm going to talk you through my process. I'm prepping my skin with a Kosa serum because it's been a little while since I applied my SPF. I'm then going to go in with a medium to full coverage foundation. Again, because the lighting can be quite bright, often they use a flash in those little machines. So you want something that's not going to penetrate the foundation and show up your imperfections. If you have dark circles or pigmentation around your eyes, you can use a color corrector. This one is by NARS in the shade Light, and I'm gonna apply this just to the very inner corners of my eyes. Now, when it comes to the makeup for your passport, you still want to look like you. We're not trying to pass ourselves off as somebody else. So just think of the makeup as a enhanced version of yourself. It just needs to be you on a good day. Remember, you are gonna be having this passport photo over the next 10 years, so you don't want to go over the top and opt for trend-led makeup. It's the same for wedding makeup. Don't go for what's trending at the time because otherwise you will be set in a particular era when you look at photos. Instead, try to keep it as classic as possible. We're gonna keep today's makeup super, super simple. Instead, we're gonna enhance the areas that tend to drain away from the flash. Because we are opting for a foundation that gives us coverage, we will go in and re-enhance any distinctive marks such as freckles or moles. That way you will still be distinguished as yourself when you're going through any passport control. So I've chosen to use a beauty blender to bounce that all over the face. I'm now gonna move on to concealer. You can see that I've actually left the color corrector in place at the moment. I'm now gonna go in with this Trini London concealer. This is great if you're slightly more mature and you don't want to enhance fine lines and wrinkles. That being said, it's good for any age group, but particularly good if you're somebody who has quite dry under eyes. I'm just blending that in with a brush, dragging the colour corrector down to meet the concealer. And then I will tap that in with my fingers or bounce over it with the Beauty Blender so it has a very soft airbrushed finish. However your makeup comes out, it will always photo softer when it comes to flash photography. So don't worry if you feel made up when you leave the house, because I promise you, you'll just look a lot more natural when it comes to the flash photography for the photo. So if you are feeling particularly dark under the eyes, the color corrector should really help. You can do your contour before you set your face. I was just feeling a little bit shiny, so I'm going to move it now. You definitely want to mattify that skin. If you opt for a dewy foundation or highlighter, this is really going to bounce back and it's going to affect the light in your photo so you want to mattify that skin we've all had pictures before when you're feeling a little bit on the oily side shiny side and your forehead is almost reflecting white because it's bouncing back with flash so that's another thing you want to avoid is silica powder anything with silica in because again that will flash back if you're using a photo booth with a flash i'm choosing not to apply any eyeshadow to this look because we want to keep it as almost natural as possible. So instead, I'm just making sure that I've got no creases before setting my eyelids with the translucent powder. A lot of passport control is electronic now, and if it doesn't recognize you, and it doesn't match what you look like when you're currently going through passport control, then it will not open those gates for you. So if you're going in there makeup free, and you're wearing a ton of eyeshadow in your photo, and it doesn't recognize you, you're gonna be standing there like a Wally, waiting to get through. That's why we're also gonna keep the contour relatively natural it will feel more made up when you leave the house however it will photo much much lighter i keep stressing it because it's really important for you to understand that we don't want to completely change the shape of our face rather we want to add a little bit of soft sculpting because foundation can make the face look quite flat so we want to add a little bit of three-dimensional structure and warmth back into the center of the face I prefer to use creams because they're so easy to blend out. I also like to spritz my brush with a little bit of a setting spray because it makes blending that out a lot easier. The contour stick I'm using is by Sosu. It's a very, very affordable one, which I love. The color is fantastic. It's neither warm nor cool. It's just very neutral. If you're relatively young and you've got quite a round face, still got that babiness to it, Sculpting will just help to give your face more structure. If you're slightly older, you may not want to apply too much contour because it will age you. So it's just about finding the balance that works for you and your age. 
this temple area does tend to dip as we age so you might want to apply a highlighter shade there a flat highlighter not a sparkly one just a lighter concealer shade will work just to make this look a bit fuller again so when you have your photographs your face doesn't look too gaunt so I'm just applying this in the areas that the Sun would naturally hit once again that color does drain from your face so if we put it in it will have a harder job of losing that therefore we'll look a lot healthier in the photo you can see how beautifully this cream blends into the skin I will list and link all the products I've used in the description bar feel free to bounce over all of your contour areas with what's left on your sponge because there'll be a residual amount of concealer or foundation left in the sponge so it will help with your blending process and to ever so slightly mute or dilute down the appearance of your contour then I'm just going back in with my sponge and some of that translucent powder and setting that in place I'm moving on to eyebrows. I like to fill mine in to their natural fullness. I don't want to go with too much of a fluffy brow. It's another on-trend look at the moment, but might not be necessarily that flattering in 10 years time. However, you do want to make sure you fill them in because they do tend to get lost in bright lighting. I do have a tutorial on how I fill them in and I will link that on the top right corner for you now. As I said, we're not going to be applying any eyeshadow. Instead, I'm taking a small amount of bronzer and I'm contouring the eye socket. I'm buffing a very light amount of this into the socket. It's just going to add some shape to the eye. You do not have to do this. It's completely optional. I like it because it just adds a little something to the eye shape and it makes the lid space look bigger. As we know, eyeliner can really change the shape of your eye. It can elongate it. It can make it look more almond, but it is passport control. So we want to look like ourselves. So instead I'm going to take a waterproof brown eyeliner and I'm going to smudge that along the root of my top lash line. This is a great hack to make your lashes look fuller without having to load on a ton of mascara. The pencil I'm using is the new one by Huda Beauty and it's really creamy so you can really smudge it out. I'm using a small pointed brush from Anastasia Beverly Hills to line this top lash line all the way along from the inner corner to the outer corner and I am making it slightly fuller on that outer edge. I am all for winging my eyeliner out, but sometimes when I'm going through passport control, I have no makeup on. So I don't want it to be something where I do not even resemble my passport photo and I can't get through the electronic barrier. So I'm going to keep it really simple and just make it slightly fuller on that outer edge for depth, but I'm not going to make it completely change the shape of my eyes. I've seen lots of the trending passport makeup photo videos and the girls look beautiful however they are so far from what they look like with no makeup on it looks great when you're traveling with friends and you whip your passport photo out and you don't look like a convict but when you're treated like one because you can't get through the gate because you don't resemble your passport photo i'm convinced it'll be something they later regret so i can't stress enough just enhance your face do not opt to change it here I'm going in with a small amount of the black creamy pencil, also by Huda Beauty, and this is going closer to the root of the eyelash. You can just keep it as brown, but I just thought I'm going to add a tiny bit more at the very root. You will see when I open my eyes, and especially from a distance, how subtle this is. So it is optional, but I really like it. On the left, we have the addition of the black, and on the right, it's just the brown. Another optional step is to apply some individual lashes. I do this for bridal so that you don't have to look like you're wearing spidery mascara in order to really make the most of your eyelashes. So if you layer some dovetail individual clusters all the way along your top lash line, then you can apply one coat of mascara and you have nice full looking lashes, but they don't look like you've gone and had semi-permanent lashes, which again can be quite trendy and it doesn't look like you're wearing spidery mascara. The ones I have cost a pound for the set. They're from AliExpress, cheap as chips. The reason I say they're optional is because if you're not used to applying them, they can be a little bit fiddly. So please feel free just to wear mascara. I'm showing you the process because this is something I would personally do. It's the same kind of vibe that I went for on my wedding day. The dovetail lashes come out in two spikes, so you get a very soft, fluffy finish as opposed to applying individual clusters that have five or six spikes to them. You can purchase these in different sizes so if you've got quite small eyes you can get them really really short but if you've got quite a lot of lid space then you can get them in larger sizes as well. 
This is a great tip for those of you with hooded eyes. You can forego anything on your top lid and instead just go and do this one trick. Apply eyeliner, either something similar to what I'm using now or a waterproof cold pencil and coat your top waterline. It will get rid of any pinky tones and this will make your lash line look fuller without sacrificing any space on your top mobile lid. Obviously, even if you don't have hooded eyes, I still recommend doing this but it is a great tip for those of you that have smaller eyes or hooded lids. I like to use the Wet n Wild liner in brown because it doesn't print back down on my lower lash line. I'm now gonna apply one coat of mascara to my natural eyelashes because they are slightly naturally lighter than the black individual lashes, so this will just help to darken them. You can also coat the length of the fluffy lashes. One coat across all of them will just make them a little bit darker, but it won't look spidery. Moving back onto the face, I am going to apply a little bit of powder bronzer over the areas that we applied the cream bronzer. If the cream bronzer that you used gives you enough color, then you don't have to apply a powder over the top. Just make sure you set it in place with your translucent powder. Remember, matte skin for the win when it comes to your passport photo. Don't be afraid if your face looks slightly darker than the rest of your body. This is a good thing for your passport photo because it will drain that color. Therefore, you'll look more like yourself in that bright lighting. That is why blush is so important because we want to add color into our skin so that we don't look like we're just one flat tone. I'm using a cream to powder bronzer so there's no kind of dewy finish to this it isn't bright this is the coral cloud bounce and blur blush by bare minerals you do want to make sure that some of this is at the center of your face so go for the apples of your cheeks and work the color upwards it will give a lifted look to the skin but it will make sure that the color is at the center because obviously your passport photo is often straight on depending on the country that you're from I'm just going to pop a little bit more of that bronzer through the socket. I'm keeping this on the outer third of the socket area. Any areas that we are bronzing is going to get pushed backwards because it's matte and it's brown, so it's going to sink slightly. Therefore, it's going to make that lid space look bigger. So we don't need eyeshadow to make the most of our eyes. We can just use the bronzer to sink the socket area. Lips are definitely optional. You do want to apply a little bit of color just to make sure that they don't get completely lost if you're in bright lighting or flash photography. Once again, you don't want to be led by trends, therefore opt for a color that looks like your skin, but a little bit more intense. Therefore opt for something that's either quite pinky or peachy, because again, it will look a lot more soft once you go in that bright lighting. I'm not a fan of lining my lips, however, in the past I have noticed that my lips do almost disappear in passport photos. Notice I've not applied any mascara to my lower eyelash line. We want bright eyes, so applying too much to your lower lid space can make your eyes look smaller. I will show you it with the mascara at the end. I'm just going in with a little bit of brown eyeshadow and redefining my freckles. That's also a great tip on the regular if you use a heavy foundation that you want to make it look a little bit more natural. Go in and redefine your freckles because it will make the foundation look less full on it will look as though your skin isn't covered in something that's heavy. Here I'm just applying some mascara to my lower eyelashes. If you find that your mascara goes on quite thick, like mine does here, you can take a small eyelash comb and just comb through them so it's nice and light. Again, we don't want to apply anything too heavy to our lower lash line. And that is it. That is my makeup for a passport photo. It's about enhancing your natural features, using colors that suit your skin tone, understanding how makeup works in lighting and not using anything that's trend led so that in the future, 10 years down the line, you still feel like you when you look at your passport photo. I will list and link all the products I've used in the description bar. If you have any questions or suggestions for tutorials, leave them in the comment section below and I'll do my best to get back to you. Come follow me outside of YouTube over on Instagram at showmemakeup and please subscribe if you are new to my channel. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in a couple of days. Bye guys.